Well, praise the Lord. And welcome to Empowering Word Christian Center. I'm Pastor Alvin White. Welcome to Tuesday Prophetic Updates. Glory be to God. It's May 21st. And let's get into it. Hallelujah. Let's get into it. I want you to go with me to Isaiah 55. And let's look through, look at 6 through 11. Isaiah 55, 6 through 11. Welcome to Empowering Work Christian Center. I'm Pastor Alvin White. We want to welcome all of those that are watching around the world, all of those that are watching in different nations and countries. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. You're about to hear the prophetic. You're about to see the prophetic. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. You know, the remnant is the prophetic church, and the prophetic church is the remnant, and the remnant is small. Okay? And we get that from Revelation, where it's talking about the church of Philadelphia, which mirrors the church, the book of Acts church. And he says, I know that you have little strength. That's from the homonym strength in numbers which little strength means small numbers all right so glory be to god hallelujah let's open up in prayer father thank you so much we bless you and praise you right now i bless you and praise you and i thank you lord god for this audience and i pray for everybody that he can hear me whether they're hearing me live right now or hearing me days from now, moments from now, I pray that you would open the eyes of their understanding, their ears of insight, wisdom. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that they would see your word. I bless you and praise you for your protection and blessing upon your people. Thank you, Lord God, for anointing me. Lord God, to be used by you a prophetic voice revealing your word. I thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Again, welcome to Empowering Work Christian Center. I'm Pastor Alvin White. We are located here in Rockford, Illinois, 4010 East State Street. And we welcome you. Go to our website, www.empoweringword.net. You can follow us on Facebook. We are live on Facebook right now. This is going to be uploaded in YouTube. As soon as I am finished, follow our YouTube. You can watch all of our live services right there on YouTube. Glory be to God. And then all of our uploaded services are right there. And um, you can go to our website. If you like to give this ministry as being a blessing to you, you want to advance the kingdom, help us advance the kingdom, you can go to our website, www.empoweringword.net. Click on the Give tab. Scroll down and then you can give. It says give with PayPal. And that's just the engine that we use. Just click on that and you can put in the amount. You can use your debit or credit card. We appreciate that. We thank God for you and your obedience to giving, tithe, offering, donations. We praise God for you. All right. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 55. Let's look at verse 6. 
It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him. Now, right there, if we try to get all the juice out of this, it's saying, seek the Lord while he may be found, which gives us the indication that there's going to come a time where God will not be able to be found. Woo! Woo! All right? So, and what that means is that there are times where we have opportunities to receive God's love. But there's going to be times where people that reject God's love are not going to be able to receive it. They have passed it up uh, and, and one too many times, and then that's going to be the end for them. So he says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Okay? Let the wicked forsake his way. So in other words, the wicked stop going in that way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Okay? All right? Let him return to the Lord. Okay? And he will have mercy on him. So this unrighteous man is taken off the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay? And so he's saying, return back to Christ here. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. So he's saying, listen, whatever you're thinking, that's not what I'm thinking. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, but who's he talking to? He's talking to the wicked man or woman. And he's talking to the unrighteous person. So he's talking about, he's talking to lost people. And he's talking about people that have turned away from him. They were following him at one time. They were worshiping him, him, him at one time. They were reading the word at one time. And then they turned away. So he's talking both to the world and to the church. And he's saying, listen, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Now, he didn't say your thoughts couldn't be his thoughts. How do we know that? Because this is everything that God is thinking right here. Right here in this word. Right here in this Bible. If you ever want to know what God is thinking, woo -hoo 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 -hoo, right here. <laughs> Glory be to God. If you ever want to know, this is the word of God. So if he spoke it, then he thought it. So if you ever want to know what God is thinking, get in his word, meditate on his word, and you will develop the mind of Christ. Okay? He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, the heavens, okay, higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And when he's talking about heavens, he's talking about the first heaven, second heaven, and the third heavens. There's multiple different dimensions of heavens. But let's just talk about the first heaven when we talk about the space and the stars. You can keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. He's talking about the farthest. He's saying that's how that's how we are differing in our thoughts and our ways. Glory be to God. He says, and my thoughts are your thoughts. Uh, he says, for as the rain comes down, all right, we've been seeing a lot of that in this area. It looks like we're about to get some storms. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, thank you for your protection over people with the storms and the tornadoes. I know, Lord, you said it's the year of the twister. I know you said it's the year of great storms. And you said that we should pray over our loved ones for protection. And so that's what I'm doing. And I give you praise for all the people. Your grace upon them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. So, he says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there. So I've never seen rain bounce off the ground 
and then go back up to the sky. Snow doesn't do that, and do not return there. And make, uh, but water the earth. What does it do? It waters the earth that it makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Listen. You remember the movie The Matrix? Movie The Matrix? And and Smith is fighting Neo. And they're on the train tracks. This is the first one. And they're on the train tracks. And he says, and there's a train, and it and you can hear it, and he says, You hear that, Neo? That's the sound of inevitability. You cannot stop God's prophetic agenda. You cannot stop his word from going forth. We, if you've been following us, we have been talking about Bible prophecy, breaking down Bible prophecy. My wife and I are on this series called The Antichrist Agenda, of which we are going forward in this Sunday. You don't want to miss it at 11 a.m. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. We start the book of Revelation. We start the book of Revelation, decoding the book of Revelation, volume one. We're going to break it down, scripture by scripture, breaking it down, decoding it, just like we did the book of Daniel. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you don't want to miss this. Okay. He says, so shall my word. Can you stop Bible prophecy from coming true? Noah could not stop. The flood from coming. You can't stop Jesus from going to the cross. You can't stop him from being resurrected. You can't stop. You cannot stop it. The button has already been pushed. There's nothing we can do to stop it. But do you know God... He tarries um, so that everybody has a chance to hear this gospel of Jesus Christ. But you can't stop him. You can't stop. You can't stop his word. He says, so shall my word go forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Oh. <laughs> when God speaks, he sends his word. Oh! So whatever you need, he's already sent deliverance. He's already sent healing. He's already sent the blessing. He's already sent prosperity. He's already sent his glory. Um, when it comes to us personally, the really defining factor is our heart. That's the ground. That's the, the garden. That It's the soil. The seed is incorruptible. Jesus is the seed. Jesus is the word. The seed is incorruptible, but the soil, remember, there's the wayside and stony and thorny, and then there's the good ground. So we have to make sure that we're cultivating our hearts to receive God's word, to work for us individually. Now, whether God's word works for us individually is based on us, so it's contingent on us. But when it comes to Bible prophecy, oh, no. That is not contingent on any person. It is going to happen. It is going to happen. So you can't stop Bible prophecy. That's why you got to get in to this glory. You got to get into Jesus. You got to get into serving. Oh my gosh, if you're not serving him. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. The remnant is small. 
You know, I was asking my wife, we were thinking about, I was, you know, you know how your mind, you think about somebody. And I was thinking about somebody and I said, oh, that's so-and-so. I was talking to Pastor Latoya. And I said, we hope that everybody serves the Lord, but when you think about our church and Power and Christian Center, we're such a demand to serve God and to really grow and go to another level of faith, faith to faith and glory to glory and to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's the mandate that's on our church. And man, it is, it is really challenging to go to our church and just try to have church, try to be in service and just try to just go from Sunday to Sunday with no real relationship with God, with no pursuing who you really are in Christ. And I said, man, that person was not going to last because they just didn't want to really serve God. Um, so I've never had this, like, I have such a um, yearning for people to realize what is what is this thing called the gospel of Jesus Christ? What are we what are we really doing? Uh, we just oh my gosh! You get born again and you give your life to Him. It, you are no longer your own. He owns you, and now He tells you exactly what to do and how to do it and where to go and how to get there. He tells you everything. You are yielded to Him. And some people, man, they want to get to heaven, but they don't want that lordship. They don't want that government structure that he has. And so I've never, like, just seen what God begins to show you the closer you get to him. And the more you're like, oh, my gosh, this thing isn't anything about religion. This has nothing. This is about when he said in the garden, this is what's going to go down. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He knew everything from the beginning. I say all that to say this. Did you see in the news that Donald Trump, he did not retweet it, he did not retruth it. It was uploaded to his social media account. It was uploaded to his social media account. Um, well, let me just let me just play, and here's a here's a news clip for you. And let me just play the news clip. Let's see what they say about the news clip here. Hey, cover girls, plant power? It's a game changer. And we got the commercial. Plant powered mascara, Praise Pumpkin God. Topia, three hundred percent extreme lush volume. Gotta love the commercial. Now in dramatic All right. ultramarine black. Clean Topia mascara, ultramarine black from Cover Girl is under fire for a video he posted on social media that used language from Nazi Germany. The latest in a series of anti-Semitic and authoritarian, authoritarian statements from Trump and his campaign. Rachel Scott has the story. Good morning, Rachel. Hey, George, good morning to you. It is normal, of course, for presidential candidates to share videos with their vision for the country. It is not normal for those videos to have references to Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler. The Trump campaign tells us this morning that this was a video that was shared by a staffer while the former president was in court saying that staffer missed the reference. But as of this morning, that video has not been taken down. Former President Donald Trump sparking backlash this morning after a video posted to his social media account seemingly suggests there will be a unified Reich if he wins the 2024 election. Donald Trump wins. What's next for America? Those words are largely associated with Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler's Third Reich, another name for his Nazi regime. The 30-second video features hypothetical newspaper articles of Trump celebrating a victory in November. That phrase appearing three times, including under the headline, What's Next for America? 
It includes references to World War I, citing German industrial strength and peace through strength. Another headline suggesting Trump would reject globalists, a phrase often used by the far right as an anti-Semitic slur. In a statement, Trump campaign's press secretary says this was not a campaign video. It was created by a random account online and reposted by a staffer who clearly did not see the word while the president was in court. But the campaign has not deleted the post, and it's not the first time Trump has used language similar to what Adolf Hitler once wrote. Just months ago, he declared immigrants are poisoning the blood of America. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. This morning, the Biden campaign issuing a statement saying Donald Trump is not playing games. He's telling America exactly what he intends to do if he regains power, rule as a dictator over a unified Reich. The Biden campaign calling this a pattern, noting in their statements that the former president had dinner with a white supremacist two years ago. And one said that there was very fine people on both sides after the white supremacist rally in Charlottesville. We have asked the Trump campaign why this video has not been taken down. We have not heard back, Robin. All right, Rachel, and thanks to you. We have a new person is under fire for a... All right. So... They learn that, hey, this video is um, echoing Adolf Hitler's Third Reich. It actually says a unified Reich. So let's find out what that means. Reich. Okay? Reich. R E I. CH. Reich is a German noun whose meaning is analogous, analogous to the English word realm. Realm. This is not to be confused with the German adjective Reich or Reich, Reich which means rich. Okay? So they have like two words that are kind of spelled very similar. One means rich and the other one actually means realm. The terms uh, Kaiserreich and Koenreich are respectively used in German in reference to empires and kingdoms. So uh, again, any of the empires of Germans or Germany the Holy Roman Empire. Holy Roman Empire. So what is the Holy Roman Empire? Again, that is the beast out of the sea that we see in Daniel and in the book of Revelation. You have to be following us when we talk about the Antichrist agenda. It's talking about the Holy Roman Empire, the papal system along with the Roman Empire, you have the civil, political, and the church together, a church state. Um, the second right, led by the Prussian Hosen Zolens, um, that is from 1871 to 1918, or the third Reich, of Nazi Germany, 1933 to 1945. And so we are talking about realms. That's why this is a spiritual thing because it actually, uh, it actually has connotation to a realm or a kingdom. So when they say in this video, you have to go online and watch the video. Go online and watch the video. Um, uh, let's see here. Maybe maybe I can get the video. And let's see if I can get it here. Um, let's see if I can get, to get the video and you can see. Let's see here. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if this is the video. Uh, no, that's what we just watched. Okay, nope. 
I encourage you to go and find the video. It's all on social media. It's all on YouTube. Um, that way you can actually see it um, because it's really hard um, to say it because it doesn't verbally say Reich, but it says it says it 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 shows it three times and it's almost subliminal. If you're not watching for it, if you're not looking for it, you won't find it necessarily. But it's there. It's right there, and they show it three times. Now, the Trump team said this morning, "Hey, we we uh, one of our staffers posted this, and they must have not seen that it said that." Okay. Okay. Now, listen. Uh, I remember. Sh I, I remember back in 2020. I remember back in 2020, Donald Trump reposted a video. Of Trumpers, they were all on boats and they were they were they were shouting MAGA, and they started shouting white power, white power, white power with white power flags. This was on his Twitter account, and guess what? It was on his Twitter account, and he said, "Oh, he didn't hear the white power part or see the white power flags and stuff like that. He didn't see it." Listen, folks. He said. Uh, uh, there are people that are close to him that used to be close to him. Um, oh, what was that speaker of the house? Oh yes. The speaker of the house from Wisconsin. Um, there was a speaker of the house from Wisconsin. Um, let me look him up. Uh, former speaker of the house from Wisconsin. What was his name? Paul Ryan. There we go. Paul Ryan. He said, I had to get rid of Trump. I had to let him go because he would always reference Adolf Hitler and he would say Adolf Hitler did some good things. All right. Now, this is a man who sat down and had a wonderful dinner with Nick Fuentes. And Nick Fuentes is not only a white supremacist, but Nick Fuentes is a Nazi. He's a neo-Nazi. He, he, this is self-proclaimed. He's, he, 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 he says it himself. Okay. And he's got tons and tons of followers. Okay. Um, Trump, you heard it in the video saying they're poisoning the blood. That's, those are things that, uh, Adolf Hitler would say. Um, he says things like we need to get rid of the vermin, dehumanizing people. When you dehumanize them, this is what, this is why Nazi Germany was so successful because if you dehumanize a person, then you can, uh, justify the actions that you take against that person because you no longer see them as human or worthy of respect and worthy of life. Okay. Uh, this is why the Confederacy and America and colonial America and America dehumanized. And this is where the word nigger came from. Why? Because it was a dehumanization word. And so anyways, when you then make that person no longer a person, then you can justify the lynchings and justify the brutality, justify all the things, and you can make them animalistic. Okay. So what am I saying? I am saying that um, this right here, his dehumanization uh, calling people vermin, uh, uh, and, and say poison in the blood, they're, they're, they're destroy, you know, all of that, he's dehumanizing people. He's doing it to, uh, Jews, Jews that don't support him. He's saying they got to get their heads examined, that they're not really Jews, that they're making a disgrace of their religion. They don't love God. They don't love their country. This is what he's saying. Jews that don't support him. Those Hollywood, you know, all of that, the protocols of the elders of Zion, all of those conspiracy theories, he's saying, listen, if you are a Jew and you don't support him, then you are not really a Jew and you hate being a Jew and so on and so forth. So those are all anti-Semitic tropes. We are seeing what Pastor Latoya and I, during this anti, uh, 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 anti-Christ agenda, what we're going to go through is we are seeing 
a repeat of history. This is why there's the banning of books. There's a big book banning. This is why there is an attack on the LGBTQ com uh, community and transgender community. This is why there is a drive, uh, a, a new term, a revisionist definition of wokeism, which came from black America, saying, hey, watch out for white supremacists, watch out for the KKK, watch out for racism, things of that nature. But they revisioned the word. And so now woke is anything that uh, they are opposing. And, and so on and so forth. This is why. Now, all of these things, all of these things are exactly what Nazi Germany did. They got rid of uh, they, they France, anybody from France, because France was looked at as having uh, a culture that was trying to get into uh, Germany. Uh, they did not like that. Uh, blacks. Right? You had to get rid of blacks, Jews, you had to get rid of Jews, book banning, all of that stuff. All of that stuff, taking over the education system, taking over, I mean, doing away with the former government, putting a new government in there. You know, the coups, remember Hitler was arrested because he tried a coup. He went to prison, that's when he wrote the book Mein Kampf. When he got out, he got in the political system, and he was... Uh, he rose to power from the Nazi political uh, party. He partnered with Mussolini, and that is how the fascist party started. Fascism. Fascism grew in Europe, and obviously that led to World War II. What we're saying is, is Donald Trump has copied all of that. Now, this... What we saw in Germany is something called Christian nationalism because the church was behind Adolf Hitler. Somebody asked, how could this go on? How could that possibly? Well, he had the backing of the church and the church was like, hey, this is God's man. Sound familiar? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Hitler, uh, Hitler had the backing of the Protestant church, and then later on he got the backing of the Catholic church. So what do we see here in America? Donald Trump has the backing of the American evangelical church, which already had its foundation and roots in racism, anti-Semitic uh, things of that nature. And so you have, uh, you have a history of being founded on racism, slavery, you have a, a colonial America, you have all of that, and then you have the founding fathers who wanted to go in a different direction, so now what they have to do is they have to paint the founding fathers as one way, and they have to paint American history as one way, they have to whitewash, that's what Jesus calls the Pharisees, whitewash walls, they have to whitewash history, they have to do all of this, to make America appear that it's always been this Christian nation birthed by God and God is raising up a man and he's reestablishing this government and now he, you can make America great again and this godly again and this Christian nation and so on and so forth. And now we're going to save America. We're not going to save souls. We're going to save America and we're going to save the world. And that is the Antichrist agenda. And that is why America is Revelation 13, 11, the beast out of the earth. And that is why the, uh, uh, the Antichrist himself, and that is why the false prophet himself, uh, that is why they will come from America because the world will trust and follow leaders from America. Okay? And the Antichrist will come from the Republican Party. The Antichrist will come from the Republican Party because you have a preacher and all the other preachers, remember God's political party, vote righteous, vote right. Yes, the Antichrist will come out of that. The church backs it. And so right now you have Donald Trump being backed by the American Evangelical Church. And so they tell Christians, you're not really a Christian unless you vote for Trump. You're not really born again. You're not, you're going to lose your salvation if you don't vote for Trump. You're going to, oh, oh yes, absolutely. I've heard it. I've heard it. I've heard it. 
Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and then the other false prophets, and this is what God showed me. Oh, I have, I have stacks of false prophecies and text messages and emails, and this is what God showed me, and this, and they get people riled up and stirred up, just like the Pharisees did. And so that's the Antichrist agenda. Everything is coming to pass. And guess what? People are just trying to live their life. They're just trying to live their life. They're just trying to live their life. It's been crazy, COVID, and and, and, and ever since 2020, and nothing is normal, and they're just trying to live their, uh, live their life, and guess what? Um, it's going to happen right before their eyes. It's going to happen right before their eyes. There, there's nothing you can do to stop it. Okay? So, um, that's the Reich. And so, Donald Trump, what they kept, they kept it up. They kept it up. Listen, you know what's so interesting is that we have this Tuesday prophetic updates every single week, every single Tuesday. And do you know, from the time this ends, I'm going to get new material in the next six days. I'm going to get new, brand spanking, new material. Even on the seventh day, I get brand new material that matches this word. Isn't that something? Brand new material. Every time. Every time. It never stops. It never ceases. Why? Because God's word is going to go forth. Okay? So, you have that and you have, um, uh, you know, this, this, this moving forward here. Um, did you, listen, I found it interesting about this, uh, keep that, um, uh, Keep that uh, young black man who was a, uh, he was in the Air Force and uh, the, the police officer just came and shot him and um, that was it. That was it. And he, they, they went to the wrong house. And I find it interesting that you don't see American evangelical Christians in churches and teachers and preachers and prophets speaking out against the injustice that was done. I find it very interesting. But you know what? Suppose a transgender shot a Christian. And let's say that happened in Illinois and Governor Pritzker pardoned him, just like the governor in Texas, Greg Abbott, pardoned this man who shot a Black Lives Matter protester. And he was a white supremacist, racist. They went through his social media and this was premeditated murder. And Greg Abbott pardoned him. Suppose a transgender did that here in Illinois and killed a Christian. And Governor Pritzker pardoned. Boy, they would go bananas. Would that be injustice? Absolutely. They say nothing about Greg Abbott pardoning this white supremacist. Listen, the, the, the apostate church is a racist church. It's a white supremacist church of which, uh, fosters a lot of black attendance. And, 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 and they make sure that they have them black people on their pictures and their websites and, they make sure they have them black people on a stage and singers and they make sure they have a black assistant pastor or something like that. Listen, I came from that kind of setup and, and they make sure, but they're never going to really talk about America's sins, race. So they're not going to really break that down and preach against it and teach against it. And they're not going to talk about systemic race. They're not going to do that. They might say some blurb here, there, and people get excited. You've heard me talk about this before. That that's because they're rooted in racism. It's in their heart. It's in the it's in the DNA of that church. Okay. Now, um, that's why their prophets they can talk about it. Their 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 past they can talk, and they got videos, and they won't say nothing about them. They'll be as racist as you can be, and they won't say nothing about it. And in fact, why do racists love Donald Trump? Why do white supremacists love Donald Trump? Like if you're following Donald Trump and racists and white supremacists and all those follow Donald Trump, you got to ask yourself, why do they all like Donald Trump? What do they like about him? 
You got to ask yourself about that. Now, uh, Pastor, do you do you, do you approve of transgenders in the LGBT community? Uh, no, 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 no. But they are sinners, and that's why they need the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why they need the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'm not here to condemn them. I'm here to give them the truth. Uh, I'm here to tell them that God loves them and that's why he died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for them and so on and so forth. But I don't choose to talk about that sin and not talk about that sin. See, and that's the that's the king of the north versus the king of the south. And that is the play and the ploy of the end times antichrist agenda. Okay, listen to... A couple of videos here that you need to hear. Ah, this is one of our famous false prophets, Lance Wall. Now, Lance Wall now shows up on Flashpoint. Flashpoint is a news program on the Kenneth Copeland Network. And so this is Lance Wall now. I've actually, my wife and I have actually um, heard Lance Wall now speak in person. Uh, at different conferences, and this is when we were caught up in uh, American Christian nationalism, uh, and, and didn't really didn't even realize it. Glory to God, Jesus set us free. Hallelujah! Oh, here he goes, Lance Wall. Now, listen to this. <clears throat> One of the interesting things about the Courage Tour is that we're unashamed about the role of the body of Christ in the affairs of planet Earth. You see, we've been so trained to think about all we're doing here is get saved, hang on, and then go to heaven. We don't realize that the ultimate role of Jesus is to come back to Earth to rule it. And when he comes back, he's going to be administrating... His affairs over nature. And that's not even scriptural. But we'll get into that as we move forward into the Antichrist agenda. He just told people something and they said amen. He just told people something and they said amen. He just told people a lie, a scriptural lie, and they just shouted amen. With no real teaching biblical context. And they just do that. They just do stuff like that because people that follow him, they just shout amen at anything. When he comes back, he's going to be administrating his affairs over nations with people that get it. Meaning they understand that he is a ruler who rules. The Courage Tour is a unique alchemy. It's one of the few times when you're going to have election integrity, understanding how to vote, understanding how the state works, understanding stewardship in occupying Michigan for the kingdom of God. And then you can easily transition right from there into Jesus in the city, Jesus in the streets, worship, evangelism, and healing. How, where in the world do you have the kingdom of God so comfortably folded and naturally folded into ruling on planet Earth? You have... So listen to what they're saying. And this is the seven minds mandate, dominionism. This is the uh, part of the... Um, uh, the new apostolic reformation remember and and some guys in the 70s said an angel came to him and they gave you know god spoke to him and gave him this and this is uh, boy it's a different gospel i tell you that and so with that said listen to what he said he said they have to rule government they have to rule and take authority over the people first and then people get saved oh my gosh it's just not even in the bible it's just not even the bible Goodness gracious. You have it in the Bible and you have it in the Courage Tour. No, you so don't. here's my challenge for you. All of us are going to be invited to rule in the new administration. You want to be on the left hand and the right hand of Jesus. You want to be close to his administration. The great reward in the next age isn't mansions, it isn't gold, it isn't endless hedonistic pleasures and delights. It's proximity to the power that rules the universe. And to him who has an understanding of that, they get more influence. To him who understands they're stewarding what they've got to increase their leverage, 
for his glory to occupy territory now so that when he returns, you have something to offer him. To them that have that revelation, more resources will be given. Now, he just took, he's taking this out of context and they do this. That's why we're going to break down the false uh, doctrine of Seven Mountains Mandate. And so um, God has called us to use our talents and gifts. And when we talk about occupy, that simply means bring the kingdom in the sense of what did you see Jesus do? Miracle signs and wonders, occupy, bring that, and then also use your talents and giftings to, um, you know, be able to make a, make a living, make money, and so on and so forth, so that you can do what God has called you to do and advance the kingdom of God. But you are not supposed to rule over people and force them to follow a, uh, a set of morality that is false Christian nationalism. You are not supposed to do that. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. I want God to begin to transfer the resources of earth into the hands of people that get it and that will use that influence in order to expand and occupy territory for the kingdom of God. Are you willing to do that? And they're just, they just, oh, amen. Oh, man. Amen. Amen. Um, let's see here. Here is. Oh. Here is a great video. Let's see here. Oh, I like this video right here. I like this video because um, this video, <laughs> yeah, oh, there's so many. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Okay. Here's, here's a video talking about American history. Franklin was the one in all of this disunity and all of this fighting and all of this, um, you know, trying to create this new government, really in almost a secular way. He was the one to finally stand up and say, what are we doing? 81 years old. Why is this man there probably? Really a, a, a total renaissance man, business, science, all you name it, all of it. Uh, Franklin had bones in his basement. When we were sensible <laughs> of danger, we had daily prayer in this room. And what he was really telling those guys was, when, when we were at the danger, when the wolf was at the door and we were in danger, we cried out to God. And we said, we, we can't do this without God. No, that's not and what just happened. 11 years into our history, he gives them a history lesson. He says, our prayers were heard and they were graciously answered. So this is All very important. You have to have a history. And so then, in our favor. remember, have we now then I saw a beast rising above the earth, having two really horns like a lamb, looking now like now Christ, but speaking said, we like Satan. Speaking like the Roman Empire. To illuminate our understanding so that we can do this. And he just gives this long speech, quotes 11 Bible verses. No, nope, never happened. on them to prayer. Saying we should have regular prayer in order to get our hearts right so that we have unity on the right things so that we can move forward. And George Washington did something interesting. He said, he said we're going to break. And we, they spent three days going to church and praying together. That is not true. And they just add stuff. They just make this stuff up. Oh, my gosh. They, they just make stuff up. And, oh, my gosh. And people, oh, they worship it. This is, oh, this is, oh. And, and, and you got what you have to realize is that the more they teach and preach this whitewash history, the deeper it gets in people's hearts and they have more faith and belief that if God did this in the beginning, we must fight to make sure it stays that way. We must take this back. 
We got to do this. And this is God doing it. And God's going to send a man to rule. See, you got to understand why there's a nece uh, necessity to make sure people understand this false history. And it brought about the unity so that when they came back into the Constitutional Convention, they were able to solve all of those conflicts and leave with a Constitution that they could all go back home and be proud of and sell the people back home on supporting. But it required first the prayer, first the worship, first the study of scriptures nope. to see what the truth was that they could build upon. So what's interesting is, is if they did all of that, how come they didn't put those scriptures that they use in reference right into the Constitution? How come they didn't use, hey, you know what? We prayed and we asked God. Listen to this video right here. We don't need more political candidates in this country. We need another William Wallace in this country. I mean, I don't think that a king is really a bad idea. I don't think that some sort of a restoration of a monarchy, at least on a temporary basis until we right the ship and get rid of these people who are subverting our country and driving its dick into the dirt. Oh, gone by whatever language it takes in order to get them out of there. And I'm not saying this to be hyper. And now he's supposed to be a Christian. I'm not saying this because I really enjoy hit pieces by the New York Times and the Rolling Stone and the Daily Beast and Media Matters. I'm not saying this to attract the attention of, you know, these people, NBC News, who called me a dangerous individual. Individual. I'm saying it because it's freaking true. Now these these supposed to be Christians, so you have to just you know the way they talk is on a whole different level. Uh, I like this one. Watch this one. Watch this one. Uh, April was the second largest month of tornadoes in the U.S. history. There was three. He said April was the second largest month for tornadoes in U.S. history. Now, I prophesied on December 31st, 2023, given a forecast for 2024, that this would be the year of the twister. And then it was going to, you know, twist is going to be here and there and break records and all this stuff. And um, uh, we are seeing that right before our eyes. I mean, every single day there are tornado outbreaks uh, at different point, parts of the country every single day. And uh, derechos, severe storms, all of this stuff going on. Um, and so this is one thing I found out about Christian nationalism. This is what they do. You're about to hear it in just a second. Um, anytime there is a tragedy, um, such as 9-11 or weather events or some type of tragedy in the country, it is, if there is a Democrat in office, it's because of the ungodly leader. When it's a Republican in office, it's because of the ungodly people doing ungodly things. You get that? When, because remember, remember 9-11 happened and George W., who was a Christian nationalist, uh, not like what we're seeing now, but who eventually basically was a Christian nationalist. You had the Christian nationalist movement uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. And so uh, why did 9-11 happen? Remember, remember Pat, uh, 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 what was his name? Uh, um, Pat uh, 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 on the 700 Club, right? And he said, oh, it's because of all of the gays. That's what he said. It wasn't, it, remember, because there was a Republican in office, they had to blame it on wicked people. So uh, if it's a Democrat in office, then it's because of the leader. So they choose, they pick and choose why the tragedy happened. And it's not because Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right before their eyes. It's not because the America is the beast out of the earth. It can't be those things. They liken America as the children of Israel. And so anything that happens, they go back and they keep that same type of thinking. Well, the children of Israel disobeyed God or a bad, wicked king rose up. And so this is why these calamities. And guess what? We are under the new covenant and none of that stuff is going on. None of that stuff is going on. But they train people to think this way. They train people to think this way. Listen to this. 100 tornadoes, most of them at the end of April... When Joe Biden was forcing on putting pressure on Israel to cease fire, See? Uh, Secretary of State Blinken was in and out of Israel. They were talking about stopping of weapon transfer and putting a tremendous amount of pressure 
So it was the Democrat leadership to Israel. And that's why... No. Last time, are the record-setting April hurricanes, that was 757 in 2011 when Secretary, uh, or excuse me, U.S. Uh, Ambassador to 2011. US and Hillary Clinton and the White House. Who was in power? Specifically Obama. The settlement communities in Israel illegitimate. And that became the mantra for the Obama administration. <laughs> now, just recently, we also had uh, floods. So, 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 let me just point out something, just in case you didn't realize it. COVID. COVID happened in 2020 during God's man presidency and America led the whole world in COVID deaths. But you had God man and the leadership. Oh, I wonder what could happen. Oh, it, it was God's man in office. Chaos hit in 2020. All in office. Oh, it must have been the wicked people that made that stuff happen. It was the wicked. And that's why they revert to, oh, it was the Great Reset. And it was the, st uh, the Stop the Steal and the Plandemic and all of that. You see how they do that? They real, real tricky, man. If it's, if it's God's man in the White House, woo, something bad happened. Oh, it's those wicked people. They're plotting and play. But if it's, if it's a Democrat in the office, oh, it's because this man's leadership. D oh my gosh, you're crazy and delusional. Just crazy. Let's finish this. Floods, not just normal floods, but I mean, quite, uh, quite unusual floods. That connected to, to uh, one of these actions? <laughs> Absolutely. May 1st and May 2nd, Secretary of State Blinken was in Israel uh, meeting with the Israelis meeting with Middle East leaders in Saudi Arabia talking about the uh, possibility of normalization agreements. You've got me convinced. When you, you, got me. <laughs> you, you got me. You got me convinced. I'm fully convinced. With, with no well. evidence, no scripture, no teaching, you've got me fully convinced. I got a question. How come Houston just saw an explosion of weather phenomenon down there? In the governor uh Republican governor, a MAGA governor, didn't they just outlaw abortion and all that wonderful stuff? Didn't they do all that stuff in Texas? Yet Texas is having huge flooding and they just blew out windows and a derecho and tornadoes and oh my gosh, what could it be? What there must be some wicked people because it can't be for the for the leadership. It can't be because Governor Abbott pardoned a wicked white supremacist. It can't be that. No, 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 no. It can't be that. Uh, you, you, you gotta hear this. Praise God. I just love, I just love this. I love this. Um, uh, here is, remember, remember, uh, Joel Webbin. Look him up. Joel Webbin. I love the Constitution. Right. Absolutely. Listen to this. Um, if there was anything that I would do to the Constitution at all. So he says, I love the Constitution, but listen, please listen, please listen. I absolutely love it. Um, if there was anything that I would do to the Constitution at all, if, if revival swept through the land or we got, a, you know, an American right. Caesar and he was Christian. American and, Caesar. Uh, the, the law of God and his second or third use functioning as. Um, you know, uh, first and third use, you know, revealing the wickedness of the people and then gospel preachers and churches doing their ministry and a bunch of people get saved. And we say, hey, you know what? We want to set things straight because there was a lot that was good in our founding, but a little bit was missing. Uh, one of the first things that I would advocate for is not what? even changing the Constitution, uh, but simply uh, adopting to the Constitution a preamble of like the Apostles' Creed. Right. Uh, to actually say that this God is the triune God and giving more specificity. Uh, other than that, my point is, other than that, I love the Constitution. We are going to behave as a Christian people. And what does that mean? It means we're going to ban pornography. Uh, it means we are going to ban no-fault divorce. It means we are going to absolute, uh, utterly abolish abortion, including in vitro including uh, the hormonal birth control pill, mm -hmm. every single one of its forms, not just the Planned Parenthood right. clinic in Texas, uh, but we're going to go down to the local CVS, and we're going to start knocking those pills off the shelf 
no more human right. So why does God call them lawless? Because they put in these morality laws while committing other acts of wickedness, white supremacy, um, uh, uh, the, the adultery of uh, ethnic worship, the turning away from uh, the gospel, the true power of God, uh, forcing people to follow something without having an understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's so wicked, he calls them lawless. Listen, listen further. Sacrifice. Right. So mm -hmm. a civil magistrate can do that. Yeah. And he he can and should do that. I want a Christian nation more than a republic. Mm -hmm. I want a Christian virtuous nation of people who will honor God with their customs, with their laws, with their sense of morality, more than I want a sense of freedom under a constitution that cannot um, govern a lawless people. Amen. I'd rather have a Christian monarchy than uh, our current state of affairs. You are not... I don't think that's up a dictatorship. It eliminates... The, it eliminates all of these different agencies, checks and balances, and it gives totality power, executive power, total power to the President of the United States of America. Not to a Democratic President, to a conservative far right president. This is the Antichrist agenda, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to follow you. Uh, 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 get in your kingdom to demonstrate your kingdom and let the love of God shine through me. That's what I'm going to do. You, you got to get in because I'm telling you, this form of Christianity, which is not even Christianity, is going to rise and take over. They're telling you what they're going to do. They're telling you, they're telling you, they're telling you. And Donald Trump, and, and listen, uh, folks, if you don't think that this is going to happen, why is Donald Trump leading in so many polls? He's going to eventually get back in power. And this time, they're going to know what mistakes they made. And they're going to make sure that they have the right people at the right post, making sure that it don't fall through the cracks this time. They're going to make sure it don't fall through the cracks this time. Oh, no. Ain't no such thing as going quietly in the night, of which they didn't go quietly in the night. But there ain't no such thing as losing this time. Now, is he going to win the election? Um... I, I, I don't know the uh, School of the Watchers, Prophets, and Seers. We've been talking about that, and the Lord hasn't spoken to this, spoken to myself or to them uh, yet. Um, I think some of them think that he will uh, win based on what their uh, feeling is. I, we haven't come to a consensus, a consensus on that yet, um, but we do know that he will get in power, whether he'll win it through this election we don't know, but we do know that he will get in power. He will. It, it is inevitable. You're not going to be able to stop it. He will get in power. And so once he is in power, uh, that power will not be relinquished. It will not be relinquished. So that's how close we are. Oh, I think I've said too much. God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Glory be to God. And uh, listen. You got to spend time with God, be intimate with him, worship him, praise him, get in the word of God, meditate on the word of God and win souls. Be a soul winner. Be a soul winner. Be a soul winner. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Have a great night. Bye-bye.